the little cottontail bunny is continuing to improve and uh, today she's looking much better this after uh, a couple of days of uh, Batril and supplements and she received uh, some subcutaneous fluid injections with lactated ringers and she's had constant access to uh, water and been fed regularly and uh, I've also uh, to reduce the stress on her moved the entire uh, steel framed uh, cage here to an area that will provide her shade all day long unfortunately I have not been able to get her to eat any kind of uh, greens any roughage the only thing she's wanting to eat is the uh, fruit uh, she really loves the apple and uh, she's eaten uh, a few strawberries uh, I left some some uh, alfalfa alpha pellets out which I guess she didn't like too much because she just turned the bowl over and spilt the whole lot of it on the concrete I'm gonna put some oats in her uh, bowl today and see if she likes those but uh, I will again leave her with fruit I'm gonna leave her with some peach and banana and she got an initial intramuscular uh, injection of Batril. Since then uh, I've been given giving it to her in uh, this manner injecting uh, the uh, piece of apple since she she really likes that apple I know she's eating it uh, every time I put it in there so I'm just placing the, the medication injecting it into the apple uh, and that uh, reduces the stress on her because I don't have to give her an injection uh, the injections are uh, uh, less safe than orally and uh, also uh, if I'm just putting it in her food uh, she can eat it that way uh, and take the dose orally and I don't have to restrain her and, and try to put the medication in her mouth and have her spit it up and all that that would uh, be just more stress on her than, than she needs she also received a tube of Pet Ag Benabac uh, on her uh, last meal, and that is a uh, probiotic. It's beneficial bacteria, and that's to help keep uh, her digestive flora in uh, proper order. Antibiotics uh, don't just kill bad bacteria; they uh, they're not selective. So you have bacteria normally residing in your digestive system that's what uh, helps you to uh, digest the foods that you eat and it's part of your immune system and the good bacteria keeps the uh, the bad stuff in check and particularly with antibiotics like Batril it uh, it kills off primarily gram-negative uh, bacteria and uh, that can uh, kill off some of your good digestive flora and you can get a corresponding uh, gram positive bacterial infection because of that and uh, it can be very nasty and in fact uh, fatal it uh, it's a condition called dysbiosis when your digestive uh, flora are out of whack and um, something that's uh, not normally pathogenic that may be kept in check by your good flora if your uh, good flora is killed off by an antibiotic well that uh, that uh, bacteria that normally resides uh, in your system which may not be a problem can become a, uh, a pathogenic problem you know you hear a lot of things with reptiles in particular about uh, salmonella they carry salmonella well a, a lot of living uh, creatures carry salmonella in their uh, in their digestive tract it's only when the animal becomes compromised through uh, illness or uh, uh, antibiotics that uh, something like salmonella will uh, start to proliferate and, and become a problem. Normally healthy uh, levels of uh, uh, gut bacteria will keep something like salmonella in check. I'm gonna see if I can pull her out real quick.
discovered the little bunny here is bleeding. It's bleeding there in the groin area. And, uh, here is the, the area I was talking about previously. Two oblong uh, protrusions of uh, tissue here, which, uh, on first glance, might lead you to believe that this is a male. And I'm not exactly sure if those are those could be uh, fatty tumors of some kind. They could be. Perhaps uh, a hernia or swollen uh, swollen lymph glands. And, uh, she's also having some respiratory issues and uh, a bit of wet nose here. Uh, not really good news, but uh, fortunately. Uh, Batril is a uh, an antibiotic that's called for and um, all of the uh, more common serious types of uh, infections which are uh, common to rabbits I'm going to have to clean this wound up here find out where she's bleeding from doesn't appear to be actively hemorrhaging, so that's good news. And it doesn't look like rectal bleeding. Maybe that found the source of the bleeding. There's an open wound right here. Right, we're going to have to treat that. It looks like just a uh, mechanical trauma. Uh, given that I didn't see this uh, the other night, and in the last couple of days this wasn't seen, uh, I'm going to guess she's probably injured it somehow, uh, maybe cut... Uh, cut herself inside the cage so that's good news it's not uh, bleeding uh, from the rectum or anything so she is not a healthy rabbit though she's very thin her, her bones are uh, uh, extremely palpable without even without even trying her uh, spine everything her ribs so she's had it pretty rough out here in the wild and and she's likely sick with something she's uh uh got some uh uh rattles or rails as they call it going on with the breathing she's making some noise every now and then and uh, her snout and mouth is wet and uh, her uh, front paws are wet from time to time and that's uh, that's evidence of a, uh, a systemic infection. I'm going to put her back up in the cage now and hope that she eats her 
apple and gets her proper dose of medication. Okay, so I had to take a little break to clean up because when Bunny was struggling earlier, she uh, she slung some mucus on me, uh, and some of it got on my face, very near my eye. So I don't know what this little uh, bunny has, but uh, she's uh, dehydrated and emaciated, and uh, has had some uh, discharge from the eyes and the nose and mouth and. Uh, She's obviously not real keen on running away for being a wild rabbit, so uh, she could have any number of things, so it pays to be cautious, and uh, I just uh, scrub my uh, arms down real good with uh, some Betadine surgical scrub, and then uh, my arms and face with... Uh, some chloroprep, uh, preoperative uh, uh, scrub uh, applicator, and I would like to thank uh, Kate Rugroden of Batworld Sanctuary down in Arlington for uh, for donating me a lot of the supplies that I've been using lately. I've been uh, pretty busy for uh, a reptile rescue this this year. And uh, a lot of this stuff I, I couldn't do without uh, donations of supplies like that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this girl uh, some more subcutaneous fluids. Now I need to attempt to to close that wound. Give her a little I'll wash this down earlier with chlorhexidine. I'm gonna I've got any left here. Got a little bit of back team there on the over the wound, which has a uh, antiseptic and uh, lidocaine in it. Cases like this, you can use super glue. Vet bond is essentially just a, a medical grade of super glue. Rabbit skin is very, very tender and easily torn, so we have to make sure that we close this up, or else what will happen is this wound will continue to spread in size. Not only that, but she's residing outdoors right now, and we have flies and whatnot. Out of this wound. I don't know if it's 
old blood. And uh, Siano acrylate, which is the uh, primary ingredient in super glue, is a substance which is uh, biologically inert. Uh, that product's normally something that's sterile and uh, would be okay in a, in a pinch to apply to a wound like this. And that has. Uh, I closed that wound nicely, very, very quickly, and I didn't have to suture it. And uh, it did look just like a tear to me. I don't, I really don't believe that was uh, a lesion of any kind. Uh, there was some uh, clotted uh, blood there. It looks like, which would be consistent with the fact that uh, the wound really wasn't uh, bleeding anymore and uh, there wasn't any exudate or uh, pus from that location so I'm pretty sure it wasn't a lesion which is good news okay and now we're going to return her to the cage and let her de-stress